is, goes along with that double cantilever um, assignment that I just talked about, um, and it shows a really um, third grade level sketch of what it looks like. This is something an engineer would give you as a technician, and <laughs> you'd have to recreate it, you know, from the napkin. But uh, the whole purpose of this is to show you the concepts behind this whole um, endeavor. So if you look here, these these salmon colored structures, what do you think those are? You guys know what these these structures are from the previous? Zero. Poly zero, exactly. So what's the purpose of poly zero? Is it the ground in the positive? It's the ground, right? So this would be a ground and this would be a ground like we discussed before. And these could be actuator plates. So you could put two different voltages here and get that get that um, double cantilever you know, to to do something funky, right? Have a have like a stressed pattern in it. And if you think about it, this is the basis of making a deformable mirror down the road, right? You can make a, a, a round bridge structure, put lots of these plates underneath it, change the voltage on, on the different plates, and get that um, structure to deform in different amounts by putting different amounts of voltage underneath, okay? So that's what the salmon colored ones are. And the red one right here, this guy, that's your poly one structure, okay? That's what you drew last week when you did your cantilever. This is your anchor, okay? So that's your anchor one, okay? So poly one, anchor one, Poly zero. Now poly zero doesn't move, it's stuck to the nitride. Okay, but poly uh, one and two can move. And then these are little holes in my poly one, my etch release holes. And that layer I think is called hole one. So that's pretty easy to remember. And this green circle here is supposed to be a dimple. Now there is a way of making dimples on the poly underneath the poly two structure, but they don't have a mask for it. So you have to do some kind of weird thing in Anchor 1 to make dimples. We're not going to um, require that this time. I just want you to use the, the dimple mask, the dimple layer, and make some dimples here, you know, according to the design rules. You want to put the dimple over a poly zero structure, okay? That's one of the rules. So here's uh, poly 2, okay? Anchor 2. I have a question. Sure. Uh, you only have one dimple up there. That's what the green circle is, right? Yeah. Shouldn't you have one on each side? Well, you should probably have one, uh, maybe one more. You don't want to put it on top of a hole, of course, but um, there are rules about that, too. But you might, might need two dimples, okay? Because I think their, their spacing is a little bit longer. Um, like I said, the Sandia process, it was like every 70 microns. Uh, I'll have to look up the dimple spacing um, for poly mumps, okay? It might be something close to 70 microns or 50 microns, all right? Good question. Um, this here is your via, your poly 1, poly 2 via. So that connects this blue guy, which is your poly 2, to the poly one underneath, okay? And you see that you have to overlap the, that via structure. Both um, with the poly two has to overlap the via, and what you're connecting it to has to have a, um, an enclosure frame that follows certain rules. And I think it's five microns, okay? And then here are the holes for the poly 2 structure, that's release holes, and that would be hole 2. And then on this end, you've got an anchor. So if we go, okay, here's the left side again. These are the design rules, you know, that are important. Okay, so you have a distance design rule B, so you can pull out your poly mumps um, design rule um, manual. And this has a certain distance. So what, what, are, what is this distance showing? It's showing the enclosure of poly zero to the anchor one. So you don't want to put your anchor too close to the edge of poly zero. Okay? 
And since this is this layer follows this one right away, I think the enclosure rule is four microns. So you have to have at least four microns here. You can have more and feel free to design more slop into it, more tolerance. Make them five, right? That's fine. And then you have an overlap um, criteria which is denoted with this G here. This is the rule G and you can look that up in the recent manual. So you have, a, have to have a certain amount of space or overlap of the poly um, one to the anchor. Now if your poly one doesn't extend past the poly zero <laughs> and ends inside the poly zero then they want you to make sure you have at least this much distance. But here you see that it extends past it so you're okay there. There's actually a rule that says it has to extend at least so much or more. Okay, and I'm not going to get into the nuances of why that is right now. Okay, so this um, design rule is the same as what it would be here, right? A lot of students forget that. They'll, they'll, they'll do this really well. They'll put five microns there and they'll forget about this and it'll be coincident to this side. So that's a design rule error. You had a question? Is it going to be the same for the top part too? Yeah, yeah, right? You have to keep this space. Now, if you, if you extend past the end, I think it's four or five microns or more, then you're okay. All right, because there's a step there, right? And if you don't align, if you don't have enough overlap, right? If you don't extend far enough past it, let's say you were coincident to this edge, the two edges are coincident. What can happen is, is when you do your poly one, you're a little bit misaligned to the poly zero, so you get a partial step, and you could have a little fiber, a little um, stringer, they call it of poly one that gets stuck in a corner of that step and ends up floating away. Okay? So you could get a stringer if you did that, if you didn't adhere to that, that rule. So you've got this design rule, this design rule, and this design rule, and this one that you have to adhere to. And there's also a minimum design rule also for all these structures. They have to be at least a certain width. Okay, and that's usually in the tables in your book. So it'll say nominal and it'll say minimum. Okay, try to stick with nominal. <laughs> nominal might be four microns, minimum might be two. Only use the minimum design rules if you have to. Because there's a probability they may not print to the same size as what you're thinking they should print. Okay, so these are, these are the overlap rules, or the, um, what do they call them, enclosure rules that I'm, I'm pointing out here. In the middle of that double cantilever um, structure, okay, where you overlap the poly 2, the blue one, with the red poly 1, you've got to have enough overlap of that um, via, that connection you're going to make between the two. So you're going to make a hole in the oxide, in oxide 2, which is the oxide between the poly 1 and the poly 2. You're going to make a hole in there. It has to be of a certain size or bigger. Okay, and then it has to be overlapped by both poly um, 3 and um, poly um, 1. It has to land on the poly 1, right? So think of it, you got, you got your oxide over the poly 1 and you want to make a hole into the poly 1. It's got to land on the, I mean, the hole in the oxide one. That hole's got to land on poly 1. If you're too close to the edge, it'll miss it, or part of it will miss it, and then you can also get some defects and stringers and things like that happening, okay? So you want to, you want to maintain these distances. Okay, I think L is 5 and H might actually be um, 4. But like I said, when you're designing, you can, you can go bigger on the design rules. So if you have a 4 micron or a 5 micron enclosure rule, you can make the enclosure 6 or 7 or 8 microns if you want to. Right? You can go bigger. You just can't go smaller. Then it becomes a design rule violation. Okay, and all of these violations came up because people tried stuff and it didn't work. Uh, oops, doesn't work. Oh, my alignment tolerance isn't good enough. Okay.
So this is the poly 2 to poly 1 overlap. You're, you have the poly 2 and the poly 1 structures. Those are the two layers you're drawing in, plus the um, poly 1, poly 2 via, which is what I tried to write here, poly 1, poly 2 via. Okay? So that's the hole in between them. Okay, now if you look at the right side of that, that assignment that we're going to do today, you've got anchor 2. Okay, so um, you're going to connect the poly 2 to the poly 0 um, using an anchor 2 cut. So the anchor 2 goes through oxide 2 and oxide 1. It's a longer etch. It drills through the whole, both of them. So that way you can make a connection from the um, poly 2 all the way down to poly 0. But there's some design rules again. So you have... Um, you have this distance here, which is the anchor 2 edge to the poly 1 edge. And that's an enclosure rule. It has to be at least a certain amount. I think it's 5 microns. But also the overlap between the um, poly 3, I mean the poly 2, excuse me, the poly 2 and the anchor. This distance here has got to be at least 4. Okay, and then you have to have at least this much distance here between the edge of the poly 2 to the edge of the poly 0, which I think is 5. So if you add it up, you go, well, wait a minute, 4 plus 5 is 9, right? So why do we have this, um, this design rule here? It's because we can't have the anchor so close to the, the poly edge, okay? And sometimes you, you'll have the poly 2 continuing on, and you won't have to worry about this rule. I mean this rule here. All right, and again, as Roman pointed out, you want to keep that enclosure um, design rule the same on all three sides of this, okay? Not just this edge, but all of these have to be enclosed properly. Okay, so this is design rule D. This is design rule E. This is design rule J, so you, you know, when you go back and listen to this, you can go through and, and take a look at um, what the design rules are with this sketch and then with your assignment. Okay, so um, here's a little detail on dimples. I threw this in in addition. It doesn't follow exactly the design you're going to do today with the double cantilever bridge. But here's your poly, um, poly 1. It's over the poly 0. You have, a, you have to maintain this design rule here, like we talked about in a couple of slides previous. Okay, and then here's your dimple. And I looked it up, and uh, the dimple has to be at least 3 microns, minimum design rule. Okay, so that's what I wrote here. But you can make it 4. Typically, people make it 4 by 4. Okay, or if you make a circle, you know, you can make it a uh, four or five diam um, micron diameter circle. You know, it's kind of nice to use circles sometimes because it looks better on the 3D um, viewer. Okay, so you have to have a dimple and you have to be at least so far in from the edges of the poly. Okay, and then the dimple has to be so much enclosed by the poly 1. It has to land on poly, I mean, it has to land on poly 0. This is poly 0 here, this beige one. Okay, poly 0. So the dimple has to be enclosed by poly 0 by at least a certain distance, which I think is 4 or 5 microns, or more. Okay, so dimples have to land on poly 0. They have to be cut so there's enough enclosure space, enough slop around it, so that it, when you have misalignment issues, it doesn't, doesn't get too close to the edge. And then this is a hole, H1, right? So you draw your poly um, 1 structure, and then you draw your hole 1 structures. And there's a minimum distance, that's design rule R, I think it's 30, and I believe the size is 4x4 four four or bigger. Okay. So that gives you the release holes and the dimples. And you have to put release holes in your um, two as well. Any questions? Good. You guys want to get to designing.
So we'll do that. Okay.